Set in a patchwork of green, abundant farmlands fed by rich volcanic soil, Childers is a storybook town on the Bruce Highway, just 45 minutes south of Funderburg. The tree-lined streets and historic buildings hint at a diverse multicultural heritage and give the sense of stepping back in time. Once a year, the iconic Childers Festival tells the unique story of Childers through place, experience, spirit and culture. From humble beginnings, Childers Festival has grown into a four-day event that concludes with the festival that stops the highway. The Childers Festival is such an important event for so many reasons. I think one of the most important ones, uh, it, it instills community pride. We get to showcase what we have on offer here in our small community. Well, I guess originally when the festival started, it was mainly local community groups. Um, but now I guess you see people come from all over the state to come to the Childers Festival. So not only does it engage with the local community, we are bringing uh, visitors in uh, from the wider region. Initially in the early days, it was, it was a lady by the name by the Nancy Calder. Uh, she put it together in, in, it, in its infancy and then as it sort of progressed from then, from 1996, 97, right through to what it is today. An ISIS Shire Council employee, Nancy has been credited by locals with not just inaugurating the Childers Multicultural Festival, but also curating the Old Pharmacy Museum and establishing the art gallery at the Palace Building after the tragic backpacker fire of June 2000. Nancy fostered an atmosphere where the arts community could grow and thrive. Though she passed away earlier this year, her legacy lives on in this popular community festival. Oh, I think she'd be pretty proud the way it's progressed over the years and um, Nancy retired and handed on to, 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 a, to another person and they've sort of developed on her ideas and, and every year we've tried to make it bigger and better than, than it has been um, in past years. Friends of Festival is a committee that's been formed, I think it was uh, 2018, 2019. Um, Perry Bacon sort of got a, a group of people together to basically assist in the organisation of the, of the Children's Festival year on year. The people are the most important thing in this community. It's their spirit, it's their sense of pride. They work together like no other. So this is their festival. There's no doubt that it's the people of Childers that make the town so special. From farmers, winemakers, entrepreneurs and so much more. But who are they? And what makes the red dirt of Childers flow through their veins so strongly? I was born here on the 10th of October 1955 and uh, apart from a, a small uh, absence in uh, 1980, I've lived here all my life. I think it's all about the people, the community, the history, the togetherness. Uh, it's a great place to be, it's a friendly place and uh, a very comfortable area to live in. Well I think there's a unique history here in Childers as many people would know the, the main street on this uh, western side burnt down in 1903 and was rebuilt over a period of time and that's why the architecture of the buildings is very similar right down the street. We're a heritage listed uh, main street here and uh, uh, looking after those buildings are an important part of the history of this community. Of the heritage listed buildings, the largest is the impressive Paragon Theatre. Once you step inside, you really have taken a step back in time. It's one of the only theatres that's actually still in original form. So a lot of the theatres of um, its kind were sort of gutted and used as other things and then, you know, um, restored back into theatres. Because this theatre has been in my family for 60 years and altogether in over 100 years of the building existing, only five families, um, everything's original. So that makes it pretty special. So the theatre was built in 1908 um, as G's Hall and it had a whole second level uh, which was actually roller skating and ballroom dancing upstairs and um, downstairs was refreshments and then in 1927 the G's converted it into what you see now into the theatre. Um, in the 20s film wasn't huge so it was used predominantly for live shows um, for the schools and um, different performers. There was an orchestra like a Paragon Orchestra and things like that. The locals had their seats like upstairs in the VIP area you know everyone had their seats that were booked in every single Friday night or something like that. 
So yeah, it was it was actually really big like back then because there was no TV. Like this is where people came to get their news um, as well and their um, meeting place to socialise. So it was used as everything. It wasn't just a theatre. During the Childers Festival, Marissa will be taking a tour of the iconic building, which includes a glimpse behind the curtain and at the original projector room. Another opportunity to discover the diverse history here comes from fourth generation resident Warren Martin, whose historic bus tour touches on the part Childers played in wartime. Well, this is uh, a 210 millimetre uh, howitzer Mauser. It's a German gun. It was built in 1916 and Australian soldiers captured it on the, on the um, battlefields at Flanders in 1917. And then after the war, the French government um, gave it to the Commonwealth Government of Australia and they passed it on to the um, War Trophies Committee. And because of our great loss during the, that war, uh, it was given to us in 1921. Well, the ISIS district made quite a large contribution to the size of the place. Um, we have a population of about 1,500 people and out of that, 360 men signed up, enlisted from here. And um, we had heavy casualties. Um, per capita, we're told, we had the greatest number of casualties in the whole of Australia. <laughs> out of the 360, there was um, 60 killed. 56 of them were locals and four were itinerants who signed up here. And another 170 came home really badly wounded physically and mentally. So. Every soldier who died in World War I and World War II has their own individual plaque there with a photograph on, the, on it. Um, we, we get quite a few visitors through here and they remark on uh, what a fantastic memorial it is. There's so much to see and do in Childers and a trip wouldn't be complete without stepping inside the old pharmacy a place which was once the central hub of life. Well, we're the oldest pharmaceutical museum in Australia. It's a unique collection. We've got a collection here of donated items from all over, chemists from all over Australia and even some things from New Zealand. The chemist was a very important part of the town because probably indirectly now we, we have to pay to go to the hospital, we have to pay to go to the doctor. But in the early days, you had to pay up front to go to a doctor or the hospital, but you could get free advice at the chemist. So with the hats that Thomas Gaydon wore, you know, the chemist, and the dentist, the optician, they all come to him. This business was on its own for probably 50 years before we had another chemist shop. So it was a one-stop shop. We've got uh, the old dental chair, we've got dental instruments, we've got some of the really old um, arsenic bottles and concoctions that they made up, the old Morgison pestles and, and uh, a whole um, plethora of um, instruments and bottles of toxic, lovely things to uh, not to take. <laughs> Another Childers local keeping history alive is Lockie McConnell, who's been developing his skills as a blacksmith since he was a child. I started blacksmithing before I started school, 1944. Just the joys of bending steel and making art, doing all that sort of thing. It's, it's a real hobby and it's a real pastime that I enjoy. Bending steel, any, any sculpture whatsoever, I love it. Whatever, whatever you want made, as long as, I, as long as I can bend it, it'll be made. Firstly, you've got to have a forge, get the fire hot, and when you, that runs to the 1200 degrees Celsius when, it's, uh, when you really get it working, so it'll burn and uh, so bend steel, steel will melt at, at, at 1100 degrees so if you, you, you've got to watch what it's, you're doing. Yeah. Now Lockie is hoping to revitalise the lost trade by teaching the craft to others. Well I'm 81 year old and how many more years have I got? And that's my problem. Might as well hand, hand the old art down before I go. Yeah. Love me rope making, that's another hobby. I love crosscut sawing and uh, I love wood turning. He'll be showcasing his skills and working alongside the local scouts at this year's Childers Festival. 
But my health hasn't been real good for the last number of years, so I've sort of hung the hammer up for a while, but I've got it back out again now, so yeah, no, I'm back on track. We'll have a good display here of blacksmithing, rope making, and I'll probably bring the, the wood lathe in too. Another trade ingrained in Childers is winemaking. The fertile soils and sunshine make the region ideal for grape production, and the Byrne family provide a unique grape-to-glass experience. The story really starts with my husband's grandparents, maternal grandparents, Maria and Lamberta Gelsomino from Catania in Sicily. They arrived here in 1911, aged 16 and 17, married, half a dozen words of English, 10 shillings in their pockets, but a suitcase full of dreams. And they brought with them their love of food and farming and family and they made a life here in the Isis district. Uh, they became cane farmers, they built a cafe in the middle of town in the 1930s and so the story goes on. So my husband grew up surrounded by that extended Sicilian Irish Australian family where family and uh, being entrepreneurs I suppose was part of it. When I was a 10 year old with my grandfather we made family wine and uh, it was just a rough red, uh, nothing special but worth drinking. When I was 17, I made my first champagne out of pineapples because there was no grapes that year. But what do we love about it? It's, I think it's continuing that Sicilian, that Italian tradition of food and wine and people around a table. Our cellar door is part of our old Queensland, part of our home. So when people come, they, it's a wine experience. It's not just a wine tasting. The perfect climate for farming means families have worked the land together and established Childers as a hub for sugarcane production. This area, this whole Bundaberg region is rated in the top three in the world as far as climates go. So, you know, we think we have a special place and when you do go somewhere else and, you know, you appreciate to come back home. I'm John Russo, I'm born and bred in Childers. Uh, Russo family's been in Childers since around 1912. It's not difficult to grow cane. There are two things that you rely on. One is, is the weather, the good sunshine, uh, good rain, and um, you know, which we really have struggled here for many years. And of course, good prices, which we've struggled with as well. So they're the three main ingredients. Uh, sugar cane is like a grass. You give it water, you give it fertilizer, it'll grow. The sugar mill and cane fire tours are a highlight of the Childers Festival and give an insight into the traditional methods of harvesting and clearing. And look, there's a, it's a real art in burning cane. You've got to know which way the wind's going. If you're burning up against the block, you have one, one person going lighting up against the block and the other one lighting and you create a draw action. There's a real science in it, but when you know how to do it, it works really, really well. I was asked to be one of the tour guides on the buses, which was a great first time I've done that, which was a great experience. But give me the opportunity to talk to the people in the bus I was in and just explain about the ISIS and uh, uh, culminating by by them seeing a fire. And um, you know that there's one of the most spectacular things you can see is is to be able to witness, as I said before, um, someone that knows how to burn a fire and, and to control a fire. It is, it is very spectacular. While the region may have been built on sugar, farmers are now diversifying into other crops, including macadamias, avocados and even fish. I'm a farmer. Uh, I'm a cane farmer firstly, a fish farmer, and also we grow uh, tree crops, mangoes and lychees and, uh, and nut trees, uh, macadamia nuts. With the fish farming, it's taken us nearly 20 years to build up where we are now. Uh, we mainly grow silver perch and jade perch and to a lesser extent we have barramundi now and again. We've got a couple of cabins uh, we here and uh, you know it's, it's, I suppose it gives people the, the feel of the farm, uh, family life on the farm uh, and we, we show them around while we're doing the fish, when we're feeding the fish. Yeah my great grandfather came over here and um, in, the, in the Childers district uh, around the turn of the century, before the turn of the century and my father he was, uh, he was a cane farmer but uh, then I've sort of expanded. I, I bought my first cane farm when, uh, when I was 24, so I've expanded from there with different farms. Uh, and you've got some of the best red soil district uh, in the country, if not in the world. I've got one farm 
At Cadalba here, that's got 87 foot of red soil straight down, and there's reputed to be somewhere around 100 foot of red soil. The people that make Childers unique are entrepreneurial with their land. Ian Jenkins has recently sold the business he started from the ground up, building a must-see tourism operation from a paddock. The property actually started as a block of cane uh, 33 years ago. Uh, eventually we converted it into an orchard and then uh, part of that orchard we uh, converted to a, a demonstration area for, for snakes and then that uh, eventually became a small zoo. Well I used to be the, the local snake catcher for, for 35 years. I did that as a, as a free of charge um, service for the locals. Um, these days we've given that up because the zoo's too, too, too busy, but I've actually been in Childers now um, 41 years um, and it, it's the people that made me stay. Um, they gave me lots of help. Um, I used to work for sugarcane farmers and we developed our own property and lots of help from locals all the way along. So mainly the people I suppose that uh, have, have made us stay in the, in the area. I think tourists should explore more of the attractions because there's so much to offer now. Uh, with um, um, with the, uh, the bird park and our zoo, uh, various wineries, uh, the old buildings, the, the, the cafes, and the restaurants and so on. There's so much to do in Childers and Surrounds. From humble beginnings, the Childers Festival is a showcase of the best in the region. Whether it's taking in the views of the rolling red hills, the fun of snakes down under and flying high bird park. You get that, aren't you? Sampling fresh produce and the iconic Mamino's ice cream. A visit to Childers means memories that will last a lifetime. <laughs>